Hello YouTube, welcome to Coding with Dom. I'm Dom and this is me coding. So today we're going to be looking at... Wait, I have a question. But I'm doing Coding with Dom. I know, I know, but we're running out of ideas right now, okay? You have a point. So, you're doing all these videos about end-to-end -end testing. Why don't you explain to these beautiful people why end-to-end -end testing is so important to you? I know, right? I'll see you later. He does have a point. I guess I've been doing these videos and I haven't actually explained to you why end-to-end -end testing is important to me. Why do I think you should be doing end-to-end -end testing? So I feel like to explain this, I need a change of scenery. So I started end-to-end -end testing in 2015. I was working on a company called Youps.com and we basically had a lot of people doing a lot of testing manually. There were lots of quality specialists. We had a lot of different websites, which were very similar among them. And so someone explained to me this concept of end-to-end -end testing. I'd never heard of it before. I'd heard of unit tests, but I'd never heard of this possibility of actually, you know, simulating a user and clicking on things and opening things in a browser. So I was intrigued. I asked someone to show me how it worked and it amazed me as soon as I saw this browser opening up and clicking on things and and the idea that we could drive this to actually write tests and you know simulate user behavior I was like why why are we asking these quality specialists to do all this really boring and cumbersome manual testing when we can be automating this and we can let them concentrate on actually maintaining quality and maintaining quality high rather than just testing and testing to make sure that there aren't obvious bugs. So that's when I started looking into the world of testing. That's when I started to open my mind and start looking into what testing actually meant. I, I had already been uh, doing development, web development, at least for five years already. And this is when I came across uh, something which I've started to have a love and hate relationship with. Lo and behold, the testing pyramid. I'm guessing this isn't the first time you've seen the testing pyramid. If it is, it requires me to explain a bit what the difference between these three levels actually are. I found this version of the pyramid and it's supposedly the original version of the pyramid created by Mike Cohn, if I pronounced that correctly. But uh, it was a very quick Google search, so I didn't put too much time into that. If you want to know more, just Google testing pyramid. Um, every pyramid image that you'll see has different layers and different uh, names for the different layers. But this is this is good enough and supposedly the original. So at the bottom we have unit tests. Um, if you're new to testing or if you have never seen testing before, I do suggest that you look into some of the modern unit testing libraries. If you're coding in JavaScript, I'm guessing you are because you're looking into Nightwatch, um, definitely check out Jest, that's J-E-S-T. Check that out because it's the best library in my opinion out there right now for unit testing. Um, and what does unit testing mean? It means testing a small unit of code. So you break your code into the functions and you test each function to make sure that it behaves as it's expected to. Unit tests are really powerful. I really think unit tests are important. Um, and the idea behind, one of the ideas behind unit testing is that it actually helps you write your code. If you write your tests first, and this unit testing really helps test driven development, which you'll sometimes see abbreviated as TDD. Test driven development allows you to write your code in a way that you already know what to expect from your code. You know what your code should be doing. Um, but we'll get back to unit testing in a second. So we have service tests. Now service tests are integration tests or API tests. And the idea behind service tests is that you test units together. So an API, for instance, you test everything that's behind the API all at once. Integration tests is taking more than one unit, more than one function, putting them together into a class or even testing the whole thing as, a, as, as testing how these units work together. 
And then on the top of the pyramid, up up there, I can't really point there, but up there, we have UI tests. Now UI tests are basically what you've been seeing with me. End-to-end -end tests is a, a one way of doing user interface testing. Um, to be honest, totally honest, I don't know of other ways of doing UI tests. So if you do, let me know down below in the comments. But end-to-end um, -end tests, you know what it is if you've seen the other videos, but it's basically you know simulating user interaction and simulating uh, what the user actually does in the browser. So what does this pyramid mean? The reason I have a love-hate relationship with this pyramid is if is that if I go and look at the original meaning of this thing, I totally agree with what the author was trying to say with this pyramid. The problem is I think it got a bit misunderstood over time because why are there these layers? Um, it's because the author is trying to say unit tests, uh, you see different versions. Actually, wait a second. So this very colorful, this very colorful, colorful, this very colorful. So this pyramid uh, adds a few things on top of it that help me explain what, I'm, what the testing pyramid should be saying. So unit tests are very fast as in they run very fastly and they're very cheap to write and to maintain because they are a bit more stupid let's put it that way in terms of uh they don't require a browser they don't require a complex environment so to run them in ci it's very easy and supposedly they're quicker to write than end-to-end -end testing i can disagree with that a little bit i'm not totally on board with that but i do agree that they're faster to run and cheaper to maintain the more you go towards the top of the pyramid, UI testing, for instance, are slower to run, for sure. I'm not going to agree that they're slower to write, if you know what you're doing. And they are definitely more expensive to maintain and to run, because you're going to need more infrastructure. If you're paying something like browser stack, it's going to cost you more in the long run. Now, what does the pyramid try to convey? What is the message? It is you should write more unit tests a bit less service tests and less UI tests. For instance, I read an article while I was Googling and I agree with the concept that you should have unit testing, unit tests covering all of your code and UI tests covering the main functionalities, the main funnels, making sure that you know everything works together. And if you find a bug, then what you do is you write a test, a unit test that covers that bug. And you make sure that you, the unit test alone uh, avoids that bug from reappearing. And by fixing the bug and fixing the unit test, the UI test should also be fixed, etc. What the test pyramid has actually caused, in my opinion, in the common mindset of developers, is that unit tests are more important than service or user interface tests. And I totally disagree with this statement because they are we should have more unit tests isn't a statement that I agree with but that unit tests are more important isn't necessarily true they're different things they have different purposes and it's right for us to not say I'm going to do one and exclude the other although if I must argue which one of these three if you have to pick and I hope you don't work in a company that forces you to make these weird decisions because there's no reason to pick between the three but if you had to pick one of the three which one would you pick i personally would pick ui testing and the reason i say that is because you can have unit tests covering all of your code but that doesn't guarantee that the basic user interaction will work that doesn't guarantee that the whole funnel will work and i can tell you that in that famous company where uh, where I started looking into end-to-end -end testing and where I started learning how end-to-end -end testing works and how you can do it, we had a ton of unit tests. We had very high coverage on our code and still the most basic user funnel on our e-commerces would break. And that means that unit tests wasn't able to catch the high level, very basic 
you know, click on the buy button and it doesn't add something to the cart, that kind of basic uh, interaction. Because you're testing separate units of code, but if you're just using unit tests, you never test them together, and so you never actually uh, guaranteed that the whole application works. So my main focus, my goal with these videos that I've been doing, and it's a job that I've been doing for the past few years and every company I've worked in, is to explain to people that end-to-end -end testing isn't, I mean, this testing pyramid came about a while ago, and I saw how end-to-end -end testing has evolved in the past few years and how it's changed and how even in just these three years, it's become a lot easier. Browser drivers are much, much improved compared to what they were three years ago. It's become a lot easier to write end-to-end -end tests and to maintain them and the services. And it amazes me every day how easy it's getting. So there's no excuse anymore to say, I'm just going to do unit tests. And the pyramid never wanted to say that in the first place. Yes, write more unit tests. For every 10 unit tests, you should have one UI test. Something The proportion is something like that. But that doesn't mean that unit tests are more important than UI testing. So, to recap and to answer the original question, why is end-to-end -end testing so important to me? It's because it allows testers, quality specialists, quality assurance people to actually focus on maintaining high quality rather than spending their time meaninglessly testing things that UI tests could already test. And because, also because, I believe end-to-end -end tests, UI tests, have gotten a bad rep because of this testing pyramid. And people have started thinking that it's on top, can't you see? It's less important. And I don't agree with that. Yes, you should write less tests, less UI tests, but it's not less important than unit tests. So, I hope that my videos will help you change your mind and find out that end-to-end -end tests is actually, end-to-end -end tests are actually easy to write and easy to maintain and that it's worth doing them. As always, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe, uh, leave a comment, ask any questions you might have. My cat is ruining my green screen right now, but let's ignore that. Thanks for joining. Thanks for following. I hope you enjoyed this different uh, format and different video. I'll see you soon. Thanks.